If you own a lot of commercial real estate, you may want to skip today's video because the commercial real estate industry is getting destroyed for a few different reasons. One, in 2019, commercial real estate was already getting crushed because we were no longer going to malls. How many malls did we see that were abandoned? I lived in an upscale community in Dallas, Preston Hollow. Right across the street was a mall with a movie theater. Abandoned, massive. We're seeing this across the country. Why? We're shopping online. Then COVID hits. People are now working from home. Everybody was accidentally trained on working on Zoom and people have started saying, maybe we don't need all this office space. And then on top of that, then rate spike comes the way it is right now with interest rates. Then banks are getting destroyed and money's leaving banks to money markets. So banks don't have the money to lend to commercial real estate buyers. And people are sitting there saying, what the hell is going on? Right now, there's a commercial real estate property in San Francisco just five years ago. It was a three $300 million property. This is in the news. They're estimating it's going to sell on an 80% discount from $300 million to $60 million. And I'm going to show you a few things that's going on right now with commercial real estate. Again, if you're in this industry, watch it at your own risk. I don't know how closely you're following on what's going on with art as an alternative investment, but a lot of major companies like Goldman Sachs, PIMCO, they're starting to talk to their clients about alternative investment. Matter of fact, this last year I was at Art Basel and guess who was there? Goldman Sachs. I had a dinner with them and it was all around people that are investing millions of dollars into art as an alternative investment. Here's some stats. 2022 was the biggest auction year ever. Highest total from big three auction houses, nearly $18 billion. So now you may say, Pat, that's great. I can't afford to buy a $5 million piece of art or an $800,000 piece of art. I don't have that kind of money. You sometimes talk about baseball cards you bought for a million dollars. I don't have that kind of money. I understand. The same way they created mutual funds, a company called Masterworks allows you to buy into art by Andy Warhol, Pablo Picasso, whoever may be, Banksy, but you buy shares of that art. So you'll say, here's a million dollar piece, I own a share of this art, and then while they sell it, you make the return on that piece of art. So today, with what's going on with inflation, with what's going on with the economy, with what's going on with the stock market, people are a little bit concerned. One of the asset classes people are looking at is alternative investments, specifically in art. And if you want to participate in this, I highly recommend you look into Masterworks. Everything they do is buy the books, SEC. You, you have to do your own due diligence while you go through But if it is something you want to participate in, click on the link below. If you get involved with them, it's by invitation only. They have 600,000 people already that are working with Masterworks. And if you want to diversify your portfolio, I highly recommend you consider Masterworks. All right, if you get value from this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into it. By the way, don't take my word for it. I want to share with you what some other experts from the industry are saying about what's going on with commercial real estate. Here's what Goldman Sachs thinks about what's going on in commercial real estate today. Lenders with less than $250 billion in assets account for 80% of commercial real estate lending. Yet, Goldman Sachs in March of 2023 said, our economists assumed that small banks with low share of FDIC covered deposits reduce new lending by 40% new lending reduced by 40%. So imagine people are trying to sell, buyers cannot get financed. I get a call from a building at $89 million. They dropped the price two years ago to $56 million to $46 million. Then they're about to sell. Then the guy that was trying to buy it, Silicon Valley Bank happens. He calls me and says, I can't get financing. Can you come in 40% on the deal with me? And I'm not going 40% on the deal with them because they can't get financing today because banks are not financing today. That's Goldman Sachs. Let me share with you what Morgan Stanley Dean Witter is saying about commercial real estate today. They believe prices could fall as much as 40% while nearly $1.5 trillion in debt is due for repayment by the end of 2025. Here's what John Kirshner, the head of US Securitized Products at Janice Henderson Investors said. He says, what we're doing is being patient, staying away from all but obvious trades, and then just waiting for the distress to come to us because it will happen. Meaning they're going to come to them saying, hey, can you please buy this building from us on 20 cents on a dollar, 30 cents on a dollar, 40 cents on a dollar. And even Charlie Munger believes commercial real estate market is in trouble today. So these are not regular people we're talking about. By the way, look at CBRE. They're in the commercial real estate business. Look at the chart they're showing right now on what's going on with commercial real estate. This is the vacancy rate on downtown offices from 2007 to 2022. You see that number right? there it is up at 17.6 percent the last three months of 2022 it is the highest it's been since 2007 it's including 2008 and 2009 look at the peak of 2010 versus today that was 13.8 percent it's at 17 point six percent since 2021 office loans in delinquency have increased ready 
44%. That's a big number. And by the way, this problem is even worse in big cities, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, big cities in California. It's even worse. Matter of fact, Brookfield, that is a half a trillion dollar company. They have money. This company just bought one of the insurance companies I do business with for roughly $4 billion. Here's what they did. They are the largest office owner in downtown LA and they recently chose to default on loans on two buildings rather than refinance the debt due to weak demand for office space. It's a half a trillion dollar company, got a lot of money, a lot of assets. They choose to default. They don't even want to refinance because no one's trying to lease more office space from them. On top of that, I'm not I'm not dumping on San Francisco, but obviously bad policies cause people to leave. Remember how I showed you that picture about the $300 million building in San Francisco that's going to sell at an 80% discount? You ready for this number? 30% of San Francisco's office space is vacant today. Ready? Seven times the pre-pandemic percentage. You see that chart right there? Where it was in 2018 to where it's at today, People are not leasing office space in San Francisco today. They're taking a massive hit. This is a reality. This is not some gibberish. These are stats. So somebody said, well, Pat, that's San Francisco. How about nationwide? Is this really affecting everything? <laughs> Do you know what is the biggest banking lending drop in the history of US? March of 2023. The previous three were 2001 dot-com bubble, 2008 great financial crisis, 2020 COVID, and then it's now, you know what the dollar amount is? A record $104.7 billion in the last two weeks of March is how much bank lending drop. Banks are not lending because money market is getting all the money today and banks don't have the money enough to be able to lend the way they were doing pre. They need money and people are taking the money out of these banks, especially with what happened with Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic and all these other places. It's even getting worse. So commercial real estate folks, they own those properties. I hope you got a lot of cash and if you have a lot of cash and you want to go into commercial real estate, the next 6, 12 months, 24 months, maybe 30 months, it's going to be a pretty good season to get into it. And by the way, we got more pages. I can give you more data. I think you got the point on what's going on today. Here's the reality of it. Question, Pat, are you buying commercial real estate properties right now? I am. I bought two. I'm about to buy another one. I'm making an offer on the fourth one. If you are in auctions, the auction one I'm going to buy on literally pennies on the dollar, and I'm buying that one at 20, 30% of what it was actually worth three years ago. And I'm going to get into it, but I'm doing it because I'm operating. I'm not doing it because I'm leasing it out. Now, some are saying, well, Pat, should I buy some commercial real estate? Is it going to be a good time to buy discounted? If there is one type of commercial real estate that the value is not moving, is industrial space because warehouses are needed. Whether the direction Amazon's going, all these other places are going to put the stuff online that they're selling, they still need a warehouse. So the warehouse model is not going away. That is not dropping. That's actually kind of going a little higher than the Class A buildings, the business office buildings. Those are the ones that are taking a big hit. Even in Fort Lauderdale, there's a couple buildings, brand spanking new, beautiful, sexy, law firm type of buildings, empty. They can't sell them because it's expensive and it's sexy. And Class A buildings today are not what they once were before. So for you to want to risk buying it, it's got to be on you. I'm not going to give you advice. This has got to be on you. If you believe we are going away from the model of working in, you know, brick and mortar type of buildings, then you know what not to invest in. But if you think this is going to come back and recover and everybody's going to be needing these buildings again, you're going to have a great opportunity in the next 12, 24, 36 months to buy some distressed properties. Okay, if you got value from this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I got another video I want you to watch. There's about 85% of economists right now, according to Wall Street Journal, that are predicting recessions here Q4 of 2023 or Q1 of 2024. If you want to know my 10 investing rules that I follow when it comes to recessions, click here. To watch that video. It's actually 10 piece. You want to take a look at that. Either way, have a great day, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.